welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we're going to look at an important concept and that is array formulas. It's going to be a little bit um, complex at first and when we use it in complex formulas, it's going to be easy to get confused. So we'll take it step by step and then we'll practice in this lesson and have another uh, example to use this on in the next class. So I'm going to start with a brand new sheet just so that we can see how this works. So uh, I'm gonna populate this here and essentially I just want to do basic math to understand how this works. Um, so in uh, column C I'm just going to calculate what A1 plus B1 equals 2 and that's 2 and then the same thing here, if I drag it down, I get three, and I get four. So far, easy. Now, what an array formula lets me do is, it lets me create one formula that calculates an entire array. And what we mean by an array is multiple cells. Usually it's a row, a column, or, a, sorry, a row, a column, or a combination of both. So, to build an array formula, we have two methods. The first one is just to call the function, so array formula, and we see we get an example. And although this example is very similar to what we want to do, and it's just an addition, the first thing to understand is that an array formula can be pretty much anything. It doesn't have to be an addition, um, and it doesn't have to be two ranges like this. So this is really just an example. Uh, so if I want to build an array formula, I need instead, so let's go back to a formula, instead here of saying A1 plus B1, I need to convert these ranges, these cells, to arrays. So I'm going to copy that, and then when I go back in there, in my array formula, okay, instead of A1 plus B1, let's look at the example, I want A1 through, in my case, A3, and I want B1 through B3. And if you look on the left, you can see, okay, I got the first three rows of my column A, for three rows of my column B. And now I close the parentheses, and voila, we have essentially the same answers, but rather than needing three formulas, one in each cell, we just need one at the top. Now, what's important to understand with the red formula is that if you try to delete what's in you know the rows below is nothing will happen because it's really just the, the row at the top that dictate what happens however if you enter something then it's going to break the formula and if you hover on the error it will tell you that the array was not expanded because it would override data in d2 so the second that i remove this data in d2 then the array can be displayed again all right, so that's the first way of creating an array formula. What I can do also is just I can I can just type my arrays. Right, if I do that, it's not really going to work because although it understood we're doing a1 plus b1, it's not an array yet. And instead of typing array formula, I can just hold Command Shift and Enter and it's going to add that around my formula. It's a very common thing to do in Excel and Google Sheet. We work with arrays a lot, so it's built in as a shortcut. And then I just hit enter, and I get my result back. All right, so now let's go back to our crew list, and we're going to apply this to our hourly formula here, our hourly rate. So I'm gonna expand the formula bar. Here we go. and we are going to wrap this entire formula into an array. Now, the problem though is that we have this AND statement in there. And unfortunately, array formulas do not work with this AND statement. It's just, it just won't work. So the, the first thing we gotta do is we gotta replace that with a logical expression that does the same thing, but will be that won't be using the AND function. So if we think about it, really, I mean, saying there's something in those two cells could be the same as saying like, hey, 
why don't you uh, multiply these two values and if it's you know larger than zero then that means there's something in those two cells because logically if if I don't have a rate then an empty cell will be zero and that'll be zero times twelve that's zero and if I don't have a guarantee it'll be four hundred times zero again zero so let's make that change first so we'll say if we'll remove our end so I removed and the parentheses I need to remove also the parentheses that that closed it and I'm just going to say I want to multiply these two values and I'm just going to put them in parentheses so that then I can say okay I want to multiply these and ask if it's bigger than zero and so if it is run the formula if it's not do nothing let's hit enter and that worked we still have something let's drag it down just to be sure there we go so so far we're great if there's nothing it doesn't do it if there's a flat we still have the if error to take care of that and if i have a rate and a guarantee so it calculates it all right so next let's go and work on our array so i'm going to throw everything to the next line to do that i hold option and and then return all right and i'm going to start typing my array formula okay i open the parentheses and so that we don't forget about it later, I'm just going to go all the way to the end of the formula and I'm going to close the parentheses. All right. And now what I need to do is super simple, but can be a little confusing. I need to change all of these cell references to arrays. So instead of just looking at E2, I want to look from E2 all the way to the bottom of column E. And we can see here on my crew list, I see what I'm working with, right? And I'm going to do the same thing with F. I want to go from F2 all the way down to the column F. And then same thing with E2 again. So E2, E. Same thing with F in my VLOOKUP. And that's it. We've hit all of our ranges. So now we can hit enter. And of course, we get an error, but we were expecting that. We're told that the array cannot be expanded because you would override data in G3. So if I if I remove G3, three, it's still an error, it's going to tell me G4. Essentially, I need to just clean the whole column. And here we go. I deleted the content and it automatically reappeared because essentially now the formula is working. If I, if I delete this formula, you'll see the whole column will go away. So I put it back. I get all my hourly rates back. That's pretty nifty because now I just need this one formula and it's going to calculate the whole thing. And even if someone tries to come and, and delete something here, it's not going to it's not going to let them do that. Now again, if they start typing something, then it's going to break. But we'll we'll know how to bring it back. So that's no big deal. Now you you could be saying like, hey, why don't we do the same thing with our our phone numbers and our emails? Well, let's think about that for a minute. If we're building this template, and we want to Keep in our mind, keep in mind what happens when when people work. They may just add a uh, a person that's not in the roster yet. They may say like, "Well, I'm bringing John, and here's his phone number." Right. So because we want to let people do that, um, we can use an array formula here. We have to just use this VLOOKUP in every row, and we'll just have to tell people like, "Hey, if they." If they go back to using someone that's in the crew list, just copy and paste the formula from one row to the next, and you'll retrieve the information that you want. So just keeping that when when designing your templates, you can't use arrays necessarily every single time. Um, the the next thing we want to do though is like for those for those columns where the results are calculated every time, um, we may want to protect this formula so that we don't run into a situation where um, someone will delete this and the whole column will go away. To do that, we're going to go to data and we're going to find protect sheets and ranges. All right, so on the right side, I have this menu that appeared and I'm just going to say add sheet or range, right? So automatically it says where I'm at, it says G2, so that's good. I just need to specify a name, and that name doesn't do anything, it's just for me to know what's there. 
and and I will say that's my hourly rate formula and then I can say all right set permissions either I can say who can edit the range but I think for templates it's most useful to just show a warning when people try to change that because you don't know who's going to make a copy of this so no matter who it is if they uh, they try to delete it it's going to tell them like hey you're trying to change something that shouldn't be changed are you sure you want to do that a couple of things that are worth knowing about this uh, feature to protect uh, ranges that I can either do a uh, actually let's do a new one I can either do a range but I can also do the whole sheet and exclude certain ranges so depending on whether you want just one cell or most of the document you can choose the appropriate window and also something worth noting is that if you want to do multiple cells then you got to make sure that they're next to each other so for instance you could protect these two cells or these two cells or these four but you, you're not going to be able to protect this and this in the same in the same swoop you'll have to add them one after the other um, we had another formula that we could protect so if I go to my roster I have my import range up there and I don't want people to mess with that either so let's do that uh, let's create a new uh, range and we're going to call that crew import range and set permissions show warning and finally one more time for our chart of accounts again cell a1 and coa import range all right and so now i'm uh, my template is in better shape um we are going to stop it here for this lesson but in the next and final lesson we will review all of the concepts that we've learned so far we'll add a few more columns to your crew list add a few more formulas here and there and finally we'll have a template ready to go